Hey, everybody, this is Liddell Beeman and Clint with Clint Speaks, and we're back in the building. Liddell, how you been, man? I'm doing real good, inspired, you know, just uh, ready to do what we got to do, brother Clint. How, exactly. How, 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 how. exactly. I'm good. I'm good. But, man, you know we, we're in Memphis. Uh, first off, our hearts go out to those, um, you know, those victims, the families, uh, for those in the uh, Nashville shooting that happened. That happened today, right? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, that that's, that's sad, man. Um, so we're doing good. Uh, but, you know, if, if you have any kind of heart, you, you're going to be touched by things that go on even outside of your community. Um, but it's been some things going on in Memphis, too, man. So um, we're going to we're, we're, we're going to start with Nashville and we just we just work our way back to Memphis. So Liddell. Man, it was a twenty year, a twenty eight year old, and it was a female. Yeah, and you know, and and that's kind of that's different because normally you hear about the males right. uh, that are going in, that are going postal, and all this stuff is happening. And I'm saddened because you have nine year olds that lost their lives. You know, uh, even in this situation, you know, these these babies uh, have not even had a chance to start experiencing life. Come on, and it's uh we we know that there's a lot of things that are happening with mental illness and things that are happening and uh but i heard one pastor say something today that was so powerful he said um he said you can't counsel out a demon you cast demons out wow. and uh it was it was so powerful because the stuff that is happening now uh it's not even natural when you see kids you try to do everything in your power to protect kids, to protect the innocence of what's happening with kids. And um, the strange thing is that here it is, you know, somebody is going in uh, with intent to harm. And we don't we don't even have all the details yet about what is going on. But when you go to a school with guns, you know that you're about to do damage to kids already. And so that's a problem. And I see it as a big thing with people where um, it seems like the world has turn their back on you. Uh, I was just, talk, just uh, talking about that today about somebody, uh, We were, I was in a meeting and they asked a question. They said, when did all this crime and violence start happening in Memphis? I know we're talking about uh, um, Nashville, but they were saying, when did all this stuff started happening in Memphis? And mm -hmm. I told them I did a parallel when Adventure River, Owls Golf Haven, Liberty Land, and it, it, it was the same year that they started closing up uh, community centers, closing down community centers. Since 2005, up until now, Memphis has been in the top 10 most dangerous cities in America. Wow. And you, and you saw as they removed opportunities that contributed to um, nurturing young people, all of a sudden you see all the crime and violence start spiking. And so I think it's a real big correlation with what's happening spiritually, the attack that's happening on kids. And um, just what's happened, just period, what's, what's happening as far as what we're seeing seeing now. I think the enemy is attacking the young people now, the younger generations. Yeah, man. And, and it's, it's sad, man, that you you want your children to have fun. You want them, you, you can't hold them in the house forever. I mean, you want them to get out and have fun, man. But with the mentality they have, I mean, it's, 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 it's like it's dangerous. If you, get a, if you get a group of them out like that, it's just, man, you... Man, it's sad, man. But, 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 um, a 28 year old. Now, when you look at 28 year old going back to Nashville, when you look at a 28 year old versus a nine year old, it's just, you know, from first glance, it's like the 28 year old just so much older. Yeah. And, but you think about it, it's just 28. But this is an, a 28 year old adult. A, a, something I've never understood, man. Why are all of these people targeting schools and little children? What is the purpose of that? It's got to be a spirit for people who say, man, we just don't believe in all that. Man, tell me why, just why do certain sex molest little boys? Why are school shootings taking place? Why do people pick up a gun and assault rifles, whatever, what, what have you, and say, I'm going to go to a school or I'm going to go to Kroger or Walmart. Wow. Like, you're telling me, and people, people may say, well, Clint, that, that's just people targeting a big crowd of people, but you don't get my point. You're not getting my point. Why a school, though? 
Why? Those are children. What kind of, you telling me, and, I, and I'm not trying to turn this into something all spiritual. I'm not. But we, we, we can't avoid it. You're telling me that there is no such thing as a Satan, but you've got people's hearts so black that you can aim a gun or rifle and kill a nine-year-old more than one. And it's always them doing that, and then they take out one or two teachers. You're telling me there's, there's, there's nothing to that. It's just, okay, they're... What they having a bad day or something? You you mean tell me there's nothing behind that spiritually to target a child, man? If I if I tap my child, and I feel like maybe I shouldn't have tapped them, or maybe I tapped them too hard, man. Right then I'm convicted. Yeah. How yeah. are you okay with shooting children? You know you know what I think people have been so desensitized. I remember uh, when I yeah. first started seeing a school shooting. When the Columbine High School incident yeah, happened, yeah. and those guys were, you know, when, when they really kind of went into their home, like they saw that those guys had violent video games, um, they had satanic type of stuff in their households because they were going saying that uh, somebody was bullying them, which I, which I don't, you know, um, say that no, they weren't being bullied. They probably were, but at the end of the day, you have to understand, you know, there are certain things that. When they when these people go into these serial killers backgrounds and they go into their houses and they're pulling up satanic uh, magazines and violent video games, yeah. there's a correlation between all of this stuff. And I guarantee you something in this 28 year old young lady's life, something was going on in the background where uh, and, we, and I know people don't want to get into this whole thing about demonic possession and all this type of stuff. But I've seen some crazy, crazy stuff. In my lifetime, I'm gonna tell you. I remember one time going to a church. I won't call the church's name, but they were in there and they said they were casting out demons or whatever. I literally saw this woman starting to leave her feet levitate, and it's wow. like I'm looking at this and the inside pastor, the church, inside the church, the pastor. Here, the now, it's, it's gonna get ugly, brother. Can I feel it? Man, the, let's go. The let's go. the pastor of the church literally. Uh, I was engaged to a young lady at the time. The pet and, and the young lady, she kind of it's like she started clinging to the pastor who was married and had kids. I don't know what was going on, but she had to uh, because of what was going on in her life. She ended up staying with the pastor um, and his wife and children. Long story short, the same pastor that was preaching holiness, uh, talking about he was casting out demons and all this stuff that was going on, ended up um, sleeping with you know my fiance. And uh, his wife walks in on it, and then wow. she was, he was talking about, well, we were, you know, I was praying, you know, we kind of got caught up, and then it happened a couple of times. And he's married to the uh, to the young lady right now, which the crate and his whole family is turned against him because of what he's done. But my point was, it's like you have people that are um, working in witchcraft that are doing all types of stuff. And I'm not talking about just witchcraft as far as bat wings in a bowl and all this type of stuff. Right. But I'm literally talking about control, manipulation, and intimidation. <laughs> you on, know, and, and when you're dealing with these different things, you know, um, the church has so many, and here, and here it is, the church has people that are really dealing with psychological issues as well. Because and I'm talking about strongly. And you and when you and when you're trying to deal with issues like that, I'm talking about just navigating through life period and you confused and you talking about you casting out demons and devils and all this type of stuff. I remember reading in the Bible of uh, the seven sons of Siva. They they're telling me they, they were they were casting out demons and the demons like, wait a minute, you know, Jesus, I know Paul no, no, no. before you and whooped them jokers out of their clothes and ran them up out of there. Yeah. Because satanic influences is real. I mean, it re I don't Regardless of what people are saying, it is real and it is saturated into our communities, our societies. And that's what we're seeing with these people that are satanically controlled some type of way where something has entered into their spirit arena and they can do this without even blinking an eye. Come that's on, what man. I think is going on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and if you think about it, man, um, there is some truth to that. If a person really just thinks about it, because you have people that are Christians, you have people that are woke. You have people that are non-believing, however you want to put it. 
but everybody's saying they're spiritual. Well, if you think on, of it on a spiritual level, if you really, like they say, you research it, you really can't deny it, man. We're going to talk about that some more, man. We're going to take a short commercial break, and we'll be right back with you. And we're back. So, Liddell, yeah, I, I, I know there's some truth to that, man. Uh, like I said, we uh, we want to talk about, um, you know, the school shootings. We're going to talk about some stuff that happened here in Memphis. We're not, we're not trying to be all spiritual, y'all, for those who may think, here they go again. But if you think about it, there are some people, Adele, to your point, that will tell you that they are Satan worshipers. And when you look in their past and look at what's going on in, in their present, you know, you will see, look look, look at Jeffrey Dahmer. If you look at the Jeffrey Dahmer Ooh. series, oh, I remember when that happened, man, for real. And he was actually studying stuff on Satan worship, man. This man literally sat there on the edge of his bed with a dude he was holding hostage with a knife in his on the same bed. And was rocking back and forth and chanting while he was watching the exorcist. And you're telling me wow. there is no such thing as a Satan. This isn't about Satan. This isn't about God. But this is going to be as usual. We're going to speak the truth, man. And that's what's going on. You cannot tell me that Satan is not influencing people and people are not following his influence to go purposely with assault rifles into a school and shoot children. I'm not. I'm not lessening when adults are killed che teachers staff members walmart customers workers you know i'm 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 not lessening it i'm i'm not i'm not making light of it in other words all of it is satanic if you think about it when you purposely leave your home to go kill innocent people man yeah. me personally ladea i have four children three adults you know i got little prince i have four grandchildren I, I don't know what I'd do if somebody did something to them, man. And I know people say you shouldn't say that. But I, I, again, I don't know what I would do. But I can understand somebody. I'm not saying it's right, Liddell, but you know what I'm saying? Somebody that's close to you and somebody causes them harm. Yeah. I can understand that. But going and killing innocent people, man. And yeah. some people are <laughs> not being killed. They're laying there injured, man. Bullets burn, man. That stuff damage your skin, your body, your bones, your tendons, your 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 veins, your arteries. It hurts, yeah. man, physically. So you've got, man, you got adults that lay in pain, man. Look, man, look. I started watching some of the, uh, some of the uh, what was that? Um, oh man, the series on um, David Caress. Wow. Um, I started watching some of that on Netflix. I'm trying to think what's what was the name of the place, man, where he did that, man. He had to cult the church. Was it, was it Waco, Texas? Waco, man, it was on the tip of my tongue. I couldn't get it out. But anyway, um when you when when you look at even that, man, I was watching some stuff with that, man. And to to for for the influence, man. The influence, wow. the influence. The influence. I don't care whether it was, with all due respect, Liddell, your ex fiance with the pastor. If you look at, if you look at the music, um, the video games. If you look at me and you are in the, um, you in the music industry too. But also, when you look at the acting industry, yeah. um, influence because you got people who want to be Nino Brown. Scarface. They want to be like some of these public figures, even some that are gone on, man. Yeah. Pablo Escobar. They want to be people like that, man. They want they want that's influencing. I don't yeah. pastors. They have to be careful because this is something yeah. that the, the Spirit of God told me a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Women love leaders. Yes. You in a leadership position or you're one that leads, man. I promise you, man. If 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 I name three single men, let's say, and I'm not single, I'm happily married. So, but I'm just going to use me as an example. Let's say I'm single, Liddell single, Master P is single. We all show up with the same social status that we have now. Your social status, my social status, his social status, my income, your income, Master P's income. 
your clout, my clout, his clout. We all show up. Who do you think the women are going to lean towards? <laughs> you already know. So yeah. I'm just saying um, they love leaders. So pastors are in leadership positions. And that's why they got to be careful because, to be honest, from the way it seems like it's real free game out here, man, when you're a pastor, man, you, you got to be careful because women want that. And a lot of times, man, I ain't going to say a lot of times, sometimes women want that because – Sometimes pastors, and this is not turning this, this I'm going, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get back on track. I'm just making a point. Sometimes you're just a trophy. Oh, he said he was, you know, he wasn't going, he faith, he wasn't going because we did this, that, and the other. So but it's influence, man. David Caress had people ready to commit suicide, and they did, bro. They committed suicide. So whatever was influencing this girl, whether she was hurt. And I'm pretty sure she was, like you said. I'm pretty sure something was going on in her life, man. That's why it's important to open up and talk. You know, and, you know, and you know what I struggle with. It's uh, it's it's something, and I know that these these topics can get become very very controversial. Yeah, I say that because you know, even when you look at you know gang members, I remember, man, you know, uh, all the stuff that I seen with the vice lords, uh, the gangster disciples, pitchforks um six point stars all this yeah. you know and it's like why why is it that they have these satanic and you think and you think about it in certain neighborhoods wow. when they're putting up all these heck these pentagrams and all of this stuff you start looking at how that neighborhood starts becoming in it wow. starts getting riddled with crime and violence why because it's almost as if these people are putting portals up for satanic man come on and man and inhabit those areas you speaking you know, you man you know, when you look at all the satanic cults, the stuff even in the Bible of uh, Behemoth, all these different uh, Baal, Balaam, all these different um, um, satanic figures that was in the Bible, you know, the, the gods that the people were worshiping, it's the same thing that's happening now. And it's like in that influence, going back to what you were saying, Brother Clint, you got people that are in uh, fellowship with the devil. Come and on, they're man. influencing your kids, even in the in, even in the recording industry, as you were saying. You have people out. There's this a uh, young lady that did a lot of work in L.A., and she said there's a building. And she was showing me this on a documentary piece uh, about about this building where these people are mastering records and they're praying satanic chants over the music in Hollywood. They're doing the same thing with, uh, with, with the movies and all. I'm like, what is going on? And you can. If you think about it, you can feel a certain presence when you're watching certain things, hearing certain things. And so you're already massaged because if I'm playing Grand Theft Auto, that's all I'm doing. Come playing on, Grand Theft Auto. One, and I'm like, and a, a kid showed me Grand Theft Auto. And I'm sitting here and I looked at he said, he said, yeah, you can grab a prostitute, put her in the car and do something to her. And all of a sudden the car started moving up and down. And then you get the money out of there, go over, get another car, go shoot somebody. I'm like. What is going on? But yeah. the parents are buying these games for these kids. And you wondering years later, or maybe even months later, all of a sudden why your kid is violent or their or they or their consciousness has been seared out, as the Bible says, like it's been seared out mm. with high codes, and you have no conscience for what you are doing to somebody. That's a problem. It and, is, we, man. and we keep manufacturing the video games and we keep putting it in these kids' hands. We keep on playing this acid rock and all this type of stuff because that acid rock is just as bad as it's gangster rap music. You know, you're playing all this this crazy demonic music and the and people are being influenced by it. And so yeah. it's something as simple as video games, something and going back to even the pastorship that you were saying uh in that we were talking about with the church is the influence of the pastor. Here it is. He uh something that I've heard you say at the end of the day, a lot of these people are still men. You know, they're still, you know, you're human beings. Exactly. And at the end of the day, um, a guy told me, he said, look, he said, you have to be careful. The reason why you have to be careful is because when it comes down to a person receiving all of this praise, he said human beings are deities that were not meant for praise. God was meant for praise. All of our praise, because he can handle that. But we as human beings, if we get too much praise all the time and you look at a pastor, who gets up to a microphone every Sunday and standing in front of a congregation of people that's clapping for him and saying, amen, amen, validating everything he's saying. And when and when that happens, if you do not check yourself, 
you will not only become subject to the spirit of God, you know, when he's giving you instruction, you will open yourself up to satanic influence through mm. being prideful, to Come being on, arrogant. And all of a sudden you'll start thinking that you can get away with all of this stuff. And so those are yep. the things that I, that I look at and I have to really realize that this is real. Oh yeah, it's it's so real. Satan trying to take your camera. He 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 trying to get you, boy. Look, look. He, yeah. We he ain't finna mess with your camera, man. Look at me. <laughs> hey, there, there, hold there, that there, note, bro. man. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. <laughs> Oh, that note, man. We're going to take a short commercial break. We're going to be right back with you, man. <laughs> and we're back. We're back. As soon as you said that, your camera. Yeah, we'll camera. <laughs> hey, man. Look, man. I, I remember when Dave Chappelle started talking about Hollywood, and he probably said a little bit too much when he was talking with Oprah on her show. And then all of a sudden, no, it was Michael Jackson. And uh, he started saying some things and, you know, all of a sudden, it was either Michael Jackson or Dave Chappelle, but it was like an alarm went off. It never did that on the <laughs> open show, man. You know how it sounds like it's some on fire, like the like it's just a, like yeah. a long <laughs> beep. It don't just beep, beep, just beep. And they start looking. I'm like, wow. Uh, but anyway, anyway, man, that for those who think, hey, we just went off the subject, we haven't, man. The thing is, the thing is, uh, the media is going to show us basically the outset. I'm not saying they're not going to dig, but nine times out of 10, what you're going to see first off is um, the outset. Okay, there was a school shooting. Yep. There was like seven to nine people that got killed. She was 28 years old. So many children got killed. So many adults, so many people got injured. Uh, that's, that's what they're going to show you. Now, when she gets locked up, if she's still living, uh, then they'll dig a little deeper. They, they've asked a question where they'll come back with another report. But what we're doing right now is digging deeper right now. We're telling you there is some type of influence, something. Yeah. Think about it. I want y'all to think about this. That's listening. We and I've said it so many times in my life, man, before I knew it. Man, before I knew it, I did it. Before I knew it, I hit him. Before I knew it, I cussed him out. Before I know no, you thought about it. Whether it was a split Come second, on now, yep. you thought about that thing. I'm telling you. Yep. The reason why we're saying something influ, we know who the something is. The reason why we're saying that she was influenced because she thought about it. Yeah. That's why it's important, y'all. When we're telling y'all, and this is this is not us trying to tell you how to live. This is just, hey. These are the mistakes me and, uh, me and Liddell have made. These are mistakes that me yep. and Clint have made. When we allowed a thought, you cannot control a thought from coming. You can't stop it from coming, but you can stop it from staying. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I've had some crazy thoughts, but the reason why I'm not crazy right now is because I don't let them stay in my head. You don't think yeah. even as a Christian, sometimes, man, I want to shoot somebody. I want to hit somebody. I want to knock somebody. Yeah. Y'all lose. You don't think I want to get to fighting and scrapping like I used to, man, not just that yeah. I'm, because I'm older. It's just ain't wise. So I just be like, Ladea, I was guilty and I'm still even at the age of almost 48. There are times where I put it like this i've gotten a whole lot better at looking at people who cut me off mm. when i'm driving i've gotten a whole lot better at people blowing their horn at me without me blowing it back sometimes now you know hey look i'm just gonna be i don't make no excuses sometimes i ain't in the mood for being humble i <laughs> hey what you look i'm looking at you yeah <laughs> <laughs> but nine times out of ten man i think about it and it's like not that i'm scared fear anybody i think i want to go home yeah i'm on my Ooh. way home i uh. want to go home yeah i want to go home to deal i don't want to go to jail i don't want to get shot because a bullet don't mean because you you could be as tough as anybody you can have your whole neighborhood sold up but if somebody shoots you in the right spot somebody can shoot you in your foot and kill you if they hit the right artery yeah yeah i want to go home yeah the thought there is influence. And for people who say, I'm just using it for an example, music doesn't influence people. Why is it that when songs come on, people dance? 
Why is it when songs come on, even people our age start hopping? This is a 28 year old. I don't know what her issue was, especially to the driving force from a natural perspective to go to a school and shoot innocent children that haven't even lived yet. My son is about to turn three. He, when I say give dad a hug, now he knows what that means and he comes and hugs me. When he see me, man, I can go and literally go to the restroom, urinate, come back out, and he act like I've been gone for months. Wow. My wife cannot go and urinate. He stands at the door and waits for her to come out, man. Wow. You know, it's like, and 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 when he sees you, it's like <gasps> wow. They're innocent, man. You work yeah. with children and you've yeah. been doing this for years, Ladell. That's how I met you, man. Like. You see this and you see sometimes, man, children, Liddell, you've never told me, but I'm pretty sure, man, there's countless, countless times where little boys, little girls just probably just fell on you, man, your chest, man, and yep. just cried. Man, I, I'm tired. I'm just frustrated. I'm, 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 they talked about, man, ain't no telling what all of you been told over the years. These are innocent children, man. Now, we've got another issue. Speaking of youth, here in Memphis, man, Liddell sent me a clip, y'all, mm. of something that happened over the weekend. Stolen cars, they're literally, and it's a crowd of youth in this video, a crowd of them, and they're crashing the cars into each other continuously, doing donuts. Like this is, yeah. like this is, what do you call that, man? What do you call that, that sporting event where you go to the, you go to the, we used to go to the college where I never went. Uh -huh. like you know what I'm saying? When you just, yeah, it's like, like bumper cars, but it's real cars. You're wrecking cars. Yeah. I mean, it was like, dude, I don't even want nobody scratching my car. And y'all taking stolen cars and ru running them into each other. Man, I have seen countless videos on Instagram, Liddell, where they have these Hellcats and Scat Packs, Mustangs, and they're doing donuts. And sometimes they're doing donuts while there's a red light and holding up, or green light, holding up traffic. But I've seen countless videos, man, seriously, within the last year alone, mm. where people have, where they're doing donuts and the fish tail, the back of the car, hit a child. They don't, some, most of the time, they're not hurt enough that where they can't get up. But the crowd is like, ooh, and then they laugh and they record. They got the they got the cameras. Yeah. You're telling me there's no influence now, Liddell. I'm a, I'm gonna turn this back over to you. Yes. Um, let me tell y'all this, man. We're twenty, just say twenty eight minutes into this episode right now. Um, we're gonna take this to around about forty minutes. We have to because I'm gonna go back, and then I'm gonna bring it forward to Liddell. Let's go back to the school shooting, Liddell. Let's go back to Columbine. Let's go back to uh, Kroger here in Memphis a year or two ago. Let's go to Walmart a couple years before then. Yes. Um, these are public shootings, massacres, to whereas people are flipping the crap out, man, and going targeting innocent people. Let's go to the Las Vegas shooting that happened last year or the year before, where a dude was shooting from his hotel room and just picking people off, man. Mm. I don't know what we need to do from a, I, I know what we need to do spiritually, uh, yeah. but from a natural perspective, I don't know what we need to do about that. Now we're going to come back to Memphis, Liddell, but do you think we need to toughen the gun laws, man? Do, I mean, and if we toughen them, what can we do? Like, cause to, here, here, here's the hold up. Here's the hold up. Here's the cross up. If we make stiffer gun laws or they take our guns away. Now you got innocent people like me who's a gun, a gun owner who, who I ain't shot nobody. So I don't want them taking my guns, but I don't want them to keep shooting up schools either. So it's like, yeah. I hate to say a catch 22, but it's like, I don't know what needs to be done. But Liddell, I'm going to come right back to you, man, because we're going to take a short commercial break. I need to hear from you, man. So we'll be right back with you all. And we're back. Liddell, what do you think needs to be done as far as, like, the guns, man? You, you know what? It's, it's, it's really, uh, I'm, I'm with you, it's kind of like a catch-22 because one of the things, too, you know, you want to um, 
create um, stricter gun laws, but I was just watching today, you know, um, just saw the news clip about Ezekiel Kelly, you yeah. know, who was who went on a shooting spree here in Memphis mm. and was and was shooting up people. They're seeking the death penalty for him. And I, and I want to be honest, you know, I'm not somebody who's saying, oh, we need to kill up all these people. And do it. But at the end of the day, there there are certain things, a lot of stuff you don't hear about overseas, the stuff that's happening in the United States with all these mass shootings and all this stuff going on. You don't hear about it. And the reason reason being is that there are there are really strict gun laws and there are penalties over there. If you're in India, if you if you're stealing something, they will cut your hand off. They still yep. live by some of those old rules. So the thing about it is, is that if you know the consequences are so severe, even the demons start having sense. Come on, man. Come <laughs> on, man. Come on, man. When Jesus showed up in the Bible, they uh, them demons that were they were they were hey, uh we know who you are. You to come to torment us. <laughs> it ain't time uh, yet, dog. <laughs> they start oh, trying to man. look for a way. It was getting like, hey, put us in them pigs over there, whatever. And and it's so it's so crazy to the point that you know, and and the, and then the demons drove the pigs in the Bible. They drove them over into the uh, off the ravine into the water and drowned. Them. And so the thing about it is, is that I keep looking at people that. They don't understand the, the consequences of their actions because right now it's like you go to prison, you go in there, uh, you can lift weights all day. You coming out in the best shape of your life. You you eating three meals a day. Got a you know you you can get a you can even get a degree in prison. Mm-hmm. You know so all of these things are going on where you're comfortable and stuff happens. So people don't fear prison no more. But when you start bringing up stuff like the death penalty. Oh, <laughs> and, and listen, man, on that note, what if we went and, you know, changed the laws or made them more strict like those third world countries? Like whatever crime you did it with, whatever body part you did the crime with is coming off. So if you, you around here, you, oh, you want to rape little girls? Oh, you want to rape women? Gotcha. Put that thing up on the wood. And, and, and it's coming off in front of everybody. You know, there are some some societies in certain some countries that have rules that are so strict that we call them strict that oh you kill one of our family members you stand over there against the wall and the family members of the victim they go yeah. gun you down or they go throw yeah. rocks until you die man stones yeah. think about it man these people still getting stoned in some countries man yeah and and there's and there's a reason because you you think you know like I, like I, I've said on mentioned on the podcast before, you know, my family we've taken uh, two family cruises together, and we went to St. Thomas, and we were over there in St. Thomas, and, and to hear them talking about the history of the island and all of this stuff, and to say, you know, it had not been a murder over here in 15 years. Wow. You know? and, and hearing stuff, and it's like, but we hear here, here in, the, in the United States, somebody getting murdered every few, you know, seconds, so many seconds, somebody's getting murdered over here. But over in an island like St. Thomas, and and I started really picking up the spiritual vibes over there. It wasn't, you know, people just laid back, you know, uh, the water, everybody's tranquil, peaceful, just just you know, vibing out. Nobody with all their craziness being, and we're and they're loving each other. I got a friend of mine um, from the Bahamas, Kingston, uh, that I met over there at Kingston. Uh, I told him about Heal the Hood and what we what we do or whatever. Kingston's a Christian man, a godly man over there in the Bahamas, and it's, he was a uh, he. When I met him, uh, he was a uh, because we didn't have a car. We had gotten off the cruise ship, and we were and they give you so much so much time on these little islands. And so we and so we were like, okay, well let's let's get somebody. And so he came. It was just my spirit connected with his. Gave him twenty bucks. He took us around the island. But to just think that was six years ago, and we're still Facebook friends uh, wow. because he's a godly man. But I'm able to really talk to him about. Why is it it hasn't been any murders over there in 15 years? This is the truth for those that are watching this podcast and just watching Clint Speaks now. There are parts of the world where murders aren't going on like this. Wow. And so what spirits have we invited on, into man. the United States of America? What on, undealt with when when the when the people came over here, when the settlers came over here, they they start killing Indians. It's not okay for people that is not it wasn't just the black people. All this murder and killing then started with the black people. When the when the settlers came over here, they call them colonizers on Black Panther. Mm. When they came over here, 
the Indians had this land. Look at your history. The Indians had that's the reason why the, the they the Indians have reserves and all this stuff and get all these federal dollars. The Indians are protected. We as black people aren't protected. So the settlers come over here, Europeans come over here and, and take the Indians' good faith and good favor and good kind nature of them giving to them, take their assets and start killing them. And so and guess and guess what the media does is satanic influence, going back to the influence. They put out these cowboy and Indian shows, and I'm coming up. My granddad got me watching these cowboy and Indian shows, and, and the Indian cowboy and Indian shows will make you think that Indians were the evil. They were shooting bow and arrows when when they were when they were, when the people would be going by in their wagons. Yep. They shooting these arrows and 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 knocking off the European cowboys. But at the end of the day, the story is completely jaded and twisted. Exactly. Exactly. They exactly. the ones came over killing these people and doing all of this stuff. And that's so why we, Columbus Day, man. I'm sorry. What were you saying, man? Oh no, go ahead. I, I mean, I could. That's that's why I don't celebrate Columbus Day, man. Oh, and I know people are like, but you celebrate Christmas? That's pagan. I get it, but I ain't celebrating Columbus Day at all. <laughs> that dude was a savage, man. You know, I mean, such a savage to where he come. And they see how easy it is because they were so nice to him, man. They were so welcoming. And literally, man, was raping and killing women left and yes. right, man. Went back to his land, brought some more people, and came back and did it some more. And it's like, yeah, you, we we literally off work. You know, not off work, but sometimes, you know, you got banks shut down because of it. It's like, y'all celebrating this cat? So, yeah, it's wow. jaded, man. And, and I, I got to bring you back to Memphis, man, before we get out of here. Not just Memphis. I know it's happening all over, but we, we got to talk about our city, man. That was disturbing, man, to see that, man, because I, yeah. I, I, my, my children, man, they're in their 20s. And I'm pretty sure these people were in their 20s or close to it. And they're taking stolen cars on camera and wrecking them. And it's fun to them. Liddell, I remember a time, and it's still in me now, because I still listen to some of the old school music that I grew up on. I don't care if it's clean rap. Ride by a church, turn it down. Mm. If I come to a stoplight, yes. turn it down. If I come to an, if I walk closer, if I if I'm in vicinity of an elder, and I call an elder somebody that's old enough to be my uncle, not just my mom or dad, or somebody old enough to be my uncle. They could be my daddy's or mama's youngest brother, in yeah. which I have a three, an uncle that's three years older than me, man. If I'm in the yeah. presence of an elder, somebody yeah. walk, that walks in wisdom that is of age, I not that I cuss anyway. I'm human. I'm not perfect. But I'm just saying, even if I did, I govern my tongue because I don't yeah. I don't want to disrespect those men that that have come before me. I don't get it now. I do get it. I just don't understand why they don't understand. Well, maybe I'm answering my own question, man, because for, for you to, to have fun with stolen vehicles and wrecking them, first of all, stealing them. I didn't even want to talk crazy around adults. When I used to cuss like a sailor, I didn't do it around adults. And y'all stealing cars, and it's you have no conviction. It's like... Man, you can't tell me, man, that there is not satanic influence, man. Yeah, even even when you look when you looked at the, the the video, you saw like a gas station. You saw businesses actually behind it. You could pay attention to see mm. there was so much. I mean, they were right there in a wide open space doing the things that they were doing. And you know, and my the thing that I was saying, I'm gonna shut my mouth after this. If something is not natural, is that if it does not make natural sense. Come on. It's a supernatural issue. And so Ooh. the things that people are doing right now, it makes no natural sense. At all. For those that are it makes no natural sense for you to run up in the school and shoot somebody, for you to get and steal these cars and go out here acting like you're on fast and furious. I mean, so much is going on and it's Come happening on. right up under our nose. And we're continuing to keep playing with this stuff and acting like it's not what it is. And, and the church is afraid. To, the, the church is silent on this stuff. 
you you'll be surprised. <laughs> you like where you know what is going on? You know why is it? I you know one one of the things that broke my heart and I, and and this might be for another another discussion when Jamal Bryant started talking about selling marijuana, so opening up a marijuana yeah. farm. You know yeah. we see. <laughs> okay, I know I know some people on the fence about this whole marijuana thing and the business or whatever, but you but. The logic that he had, I'm hearing what he's saying, talking about we get men in the church and we had this and we're selling this cannabis and all this type of stuff. I hear that, but at the end of the day, he's letting the world influence him versus influencing the world. And the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the reason why a lot of us can't renew our minds is we done lost our mind. I'm going to leave it alone. And on that note, I'm not even coming behind that one. Man, you said some heavy stuff there. So, hey, this has been another Clint Speaks podcast episode, man. So we got Liddell Beeman, Liddell Beeman and Clint with Clint Speaks, y'all. And we're out. Yes.